Well, hello and welcome to this video. I am so excited that you are joining me today. Many of you um, saw that I did a five video series on Instagram about psychological defense mechanisms. And there was a lot of questions about projection, which is one of the psychological defense mechanisms that Freud originated and then Anna Freud added to later on in life. And so in this episode, I'm going to be talking about projection and helping you figure out when you are projecting because projection gets in the way of you having healthy boundaries. So if you're new to this channel, I want to say a welcome. Please introduce yourself below. I read all the comments. You guys know I'm super involved here. Make sure that you subscribe and hit the bell so that you don't miss when I have new stuff coming out, which is pretty much every week. And if you don't know me, my name is Terry Cole, licensed psychotherapist, relationship expert, and the author of Boundary Boss, which you can get right now at boundarybossbook.com. So keep your questions and your comments coming. I super appreciate you and make sure that you subscribe right now. All right, let's move into the content of today's episode. So projection, what is it? So this is one of the psychological defense mechanisms that we unconsciously employ, right? It's a way to um, protect us from unwanted emotions. So it's, it's the mind does this, it's natural, right? We all, we all use defense mechanisms to a degree, but this is part of becoming more psychologically and emotionally healthy is realizing where we're doing it and being able to shift because if we are in a situation where our psychological defense mechanisms are kind of running the show of our life there's a lot of things that we think we're understanding but we're actually not that we're kind of getting wrong so you know let's say a, a, a super simple example of projection would be um, one person in a relationship is cheating with someone at their office, yet they come home and accuse their spouse of cheating or flirting with someone at a party or whatever. They're taking their unwanted acts, right? They're actually being dishonest and stepping out on their relationship. And instead of owning it, they feel that the other person is doing the thing that they are doing. Um, other ideas, like other real life examples of projection. Maybe you have someone new at your office that you work with. And from the moment you see that person, you don't like them. And you don't like that about yourself, right? So unconsciously, you don't like that about yourself. So instead of recognizing like, wow, I don't even know Betty. I don't know why I don't like her, but I don't. You go, I don't think the new person likes me. I feel like Betty, I don't know, she's kind of judgmental. I don't, I don't think she likes me. And that's a real experience where it really feels like our disavowed feelings, right? That's what we'll call them. The ones that we want to hide, the ones that we want to keep in the shadow. Instead of feeling them coming from us, we feel them coming at us from the other person. Um, another example is if a teenage kid has a car that they think is a crappy car, they, they project and say, well, I'm not getting any dates because my car is not cool. What they're really doing is projecting their own insecurities of not being cool enough to date whoever they want to date onto their car and basically blaming the car for what's happening. Again, with defense mechanisms, they're there for a reason. They are sparing us from something. So a lot of times this can be, we can use projection and it can go out, not just against people. It can be against the government, against um, society, and the car example is even an inanimate object, right? That can happen there as well. So it happens on um, a, a personal level, right? We're dealing with that. And why do we care? Because to know yourself, 
you, you want to know what is actually happening in your relationship. So it's not just, it's not just, um, projecting out negative things. There's, there's two different kinds of projection that you can employ again, mostly unconsciously. And now hopefully I'm helping you bring this from the basement of your mind, which is your unconscious mind into your conscious awareness. So then you can shift it. So it's generally called uh, neurotic projection. And that's when what I just described, you attribute feelings, motives, desires, and attitudes um, that you deem unacceptable onto someone else. Right. And this, this is what is the most common that we see in the way of the sort of the negative projection, but then there's complementary projection. And I see this all the time. I've seen it in my therapy practice for decades where we make assumptions, right? Either that other people share our opinion on things, right? That, that we're all the same. I can't tell you how many times clients have said, well, I'm, I'm sure other people, you know, everyone experiences this, whatever, whatever it is that they're going through, or they think that everyone has the skills that they have, like it's no big deal. And I'm all like, no, not everyone is, has your problems and not everyone has your skills either. So complimentary projection is like, we are giving people more credit than they deserve. Um, so let's just say there's, if you are, um, personally, concerned about your carbon footprint in the world. It's assuming that everyone else is also concerned about the environment in that same way. And it can be very jarring and shocking to realize that not everyone is, not everyone is like you, that you are very unique and individual. You also, I see this a lot with my therapy clients where it's like they minimize their own skills to a degree and they assume that other people have those same skills that they have so whether it's speaking another language whether it's being an amazing cook they're they're very much like minimizing their own and saying well kind of everyone can do that making that assumption which is not true so i mean complimentary projection it's not always a bad thing right Complementary projection, it basically gives us a sense of like connectedness and mutuality. And in a way it helps us relate to other people. And a lot of times we do find our people, right? So in business, I mean, you're watching this, which means you're interested in mental health um, or healthy relationships or better communication. So we kind of do find our people in the world and there is a sense of community, but there's also something about projecting onto people that we don't know that is just misleading and it's confusing. And it's almost like, you know, we, we all have these schemas in our minds, which is the way that we organize information because we are processing so much information on a daily basis that sometimes we, we create a schema of like, this is the way the world is. It's kind of similar to when I talk about downloaded blueprints where it's like a paradigm in your mind where you're like, okay, this is the way it is. This is similar to that. If we make these positive and or negative assumptions about other people, whether it's neurotic projection or whether it's complementary projection, it's still projection. And so it's definitely um, healthier and more effective to ask questions than make assumptions. So you've got to get into your awareness. So I, I've created a little step-by-step -step guide for you to create more awareness where you think you might be projecting. So you have to really ask yourself where in your life do you make assumptions or do you have a big um, experience or a big emotional reaction to someone that you don't actually have a lot of evidence to tell you that that is accurate. Right? We want to sort of go through this process of decoding what is really happening in your relationships. So let's just take the work example. If you, there's a new person at work and you don't know them well, but you make an assumption 
and you've had very little interaction with them, but you make an assumption that they don't like you. That would be a moment to say, huh, all right, what are the facts? Like what actually happened? And is it that I don't like them? Because here's the thing. Sometimes we will have this um, transference to people, right? I've taught about this. I've talked about this. I've had videos on this where we have a particular reaction to someone that's really based on a past experience. They may remind us of someone we had a bad experience with, or they may remind us of a punitive parent. And so our experience, there could be two things going on, <laughs> two dysfunctional psychological things happening where we may be having a transference reaction to that new person at work. Maybe they remind you of your bully older sister, let's say. So that's one thing. And then since you don't like to feel that way, you then unconsciously project that they are actually, they don't like you. We want to get clear on this though. So I think that the, the steps that I've given you in the downloadable guide is to basically be more um, factual about what actually happened. When you find yourself in like a confusing situation where you're not positive, how you, how you feel or why you feel this way. Um, you, you want to move into the step-by-step -step process of revisiting that conflict. Let's say we had a conflict with someone. You're going to revisit it, but you're going to do it from a more um, balanced or objective place. It's almost like becoming a New York Times reporter where instead of just seeing it from your point of view, you're going to try to see it from both points of view. And then you're gonna factually write down the actions that you took, any assumptions that you may have made, and then you're going to factually write down the way the other person responded and any assumptions you think they may have made, right? This is how you can get to decoding what might really have happened. Because the more well-versed you become in understanding um, the most common psychological defense mechanisms you're using in your life, the healthier your relationships will be and the more empowered you become in your relationships. Because it is confusing to other people just as it's confusing to us. If you are responding to the new person at work as if they don't like you, but they've really done nothing that is factual that would make that be true. Do you see how that complicates boundaries? These are narratives that are untrue <laughs> and that we make up in our mind because we don't want to deal with our own shadow emotions. And I think that this is also an opportunity to look into, I'm actually going to do a whole other um, episode on embracing our shadow, understanding it. Why is it valuable? And if you don't know what your shadow is, it's basically all of these disavowed uh, qualities or emotions that we have a tendency to want to shove under the rug, but they don't just go away, right? In real life and in psychological life, what is true is true. And so we find all our mind, because it's trying to protect us from pain, finds all of these ways to sort of twist up the truth, to make it fit into something that spares us from looking at ourselves. But I think that you are very brave and that you are not that fragile and that it's okay to have qualities that you don't like about yourself. All of us can be petty. All of us can be judgmental. All of us can be punitive. But we each have specific things about ourselves that we don't like and that we want to deny. Un again, keep in mind, this is all unconscious. So it's not about being wrong or being a bad person. I want you to understand that this is an unconscious thing that is happening. But you have the power, and I'm giving you this downloadable guide that will help you Bring this information from your unconscious, which is the basement of your mind, as I like to call it, into your conscious mind. 
so that you can start dealing more directly with your eyes more wide open in your life because consistently projecting whether you're doing it in a complimentary way quote unquote or whether you're doing it in a more neurotic way is not the same as living a fully expressed and self-determined life and I want all of you to become boundary bosses and that means you can't be projecting all over town so I'd love to know what you think about this episode. Did it speak to you? Please download the guide that I made for you so you can be moving along on your mental health and wellness path towards more boundary, boundary bossness and away from all of this unconscious stuff that really does get in the way of creating the life and the relationships that you want and love. Hey, if this added value to your life, please share it on your social platforms. You know, I'm always hanging out on Instagram, so put it in your story and I'll most likely repost it. And I just wanna say thank you, thank you, thank you for caring about your mental health. You are my people and I so appreciate you. So have the most amazing week and as always, take care of you.